Algebra Lesson 4-3. We've been dealing with different parts of graphs, and today we're going to look specifically at a couple more pieces of the graphs, one of those being what we call the x-intercept. And just like a quarterback throws a pass to a receiver and the other team, the defense, intercepts the ball, in other words, the defender crosses the path between the quarterback and the receiver, that's why it's called an interception, the x-intercept is the point on the x-axis where our graphed line that we're making actually comes in contact with the x-axis. And if you think about if you were on the x-axis, the x-axis is horizontal, which is where we move left and right. If we're on the x-axis, we have not gone up and we have not gone down, therefore our y value is always a zero, because we haven't gone up, we haven't gone down. If we have an x-intercept, then that would make sense that we would have a y-intercept in very much the same way it crosses the y-axis where our graphed line makes contact with the y-axis. Now, if you think about the y-axis as being vertical, that means we haven't gone to the right and we haven't gone to the left, so our x value is zero. So as far as coordinates are concerned, these are two different coordinates. This coordinate is going to have some number, because it all depends on where it crosses the x-axis, comma zero. So the coordinate would always look like this, because the y value has to be zero. But the y-intercept flips that, and instead you would have a zero for your x, and then you'd have some number for wherever your graph actually crosses the y-axis. That would be this value. So in a visual form, it would look like such. That we have right here is the y-intercept. Notice that we are at the x value of zero because we've not gone right, we've not gone left. And here we are at the x-intercept. Our y-value is zero because we have not gone up and we have not gone down. Anything on the x-axis would be considered zero <clears throat> for y. So that's what the x and y intercepts would be. Now we've been making graphs with input output tables, but you can also make a graph using the x and y intercepts. Typically you need to have three inputs for your input output table. That's what I recommend. The bare minimum for making a graph is two points. If you draw one point, if I just draw a point, we have no idea if the line goes there, 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 there. We just have no idea. You need a second point in order to do, you know, give it some direction. So, this is the basic key right here. If you want to find those intercepts based on the information that we know here about what we have as far as our values for x and y, if you want to find the x-intercept, simply put zero in for y. That way you can get rid of the y and concentrate your efforts on solving for x. So if you want the x-intercept, zero gets put in for y. On the flip of that, if you want to find the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x. Whichever letter intercept you want, put 0 in for the other letter, so you can concentrate on that letter itself. <clears throat> find the x-intercept of x minus 2y equals 6. When we want to find the x-intercept, that means that y is going to equal 0. So that's what we must put in for the y. You now have x minus 2 times 0 is equal to 6, which means x minus 0 is equal to 6, and x minus 0 is just x. This graph would cross the x-axis at 6. As far as a coordinate is concerned, you would say it's at 6, 0. 0 for y, 6 for x. You want the x-intercept, you plug a 0 in for the y. Same thing, we plug 0 in for the y, we now have 2x plus 6 times 0 is equal to negative 24. That all equals 0, so you now have 2x equals negative 24, which means we want to get x alone, so we divide by 2. A negative divided by a positive makes a negative. So the x-intercept would go to the left 12 places. As far as a coordinate is concerned, that would be negative 12 comma 0. So finding the x-intercept is rather easy, as long as you remember to put the 0 in for y and concentrate your efforts on solving for x. Now the flip of this, if we want to find the y-intercept, if you want to find the y-intercept, then x equals 0. And now y equals negative 2 times 0 plus 5, which means y is equal to 0 plus 5, because negative 2 times 0 is 0, and y equals 5. As a coordinate, your x value is 0, so that would be 0, comma, 5. And one more. 
Again, the same thing. We plug zero in. We're trying to find the y-intercept, so zero must go in for x. Four times zero. Now, I would change that to plus negative, so you don't mess up your signs. Plus negative 5y equals negative 35. Very common mistake for someone to not change this and then just have 5y when they eliminate the x's. So zero, that's all gone. You can basically concentrate on saying that you have this scenario of negative 5y equals negative 35. You must divide by negative 5 to cancel it out. And y is equal to positive 7. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. We plugged in 0 for x, so our coordinate is 0, 7. All right, now we take all of that and we put it together to make our own graph using those two x and y intercepts. So to concentrate, x intercept first, let's say. That means you're going to put 0 in for y. Right, so we'll go negative 4x plus 3 times 0 is equal to 24. Well, the 0 times 3 is going to cancel it out. We really just have negative 4x equals 24. So we divide by negative 4. And our final answer is x equals negative 6. So I come over here to the graph and I go out to the left 6 places. That's my x-intercept. We must do the same thing except for the y-intercept. And when you find the y-intercept, the x equals 0. So we take the exact same problem and we go negative 4 times 0 plus 3y equals 24. Which means all this cancels out, leaving us with 3y equals 24. And we divide by 3. And our final answer is y equals 8. And at y equals 8, I should have a dot right there. So all I need to do is connect the two. And I have my graph for the values. And anything on this purple line would work in this graph, in this equation. Make that a little better. Now let's test one and see. Uh, right here looks like a coordinate on the graph. That's at the coordinate negative 3, positive 4. Negative 3, positive 4. You test it. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. 3 times positive 4 is positive 12. 12 plus 12 makes 24. It works. Any coordinate on that purple line will work in this equation. So you have a choice now. You can either make an input-output table in which I recommend you substitute a value in for x that's positive, negative, and 0. Have three points. Make sure it makes a straight line. Or you can use the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Plug a 0 in for y when you want the x-intercept. Plug a zero in for x when you want the y-intercept. Always plug a zero in for the letter opposite or other than the intercept you're looking for. Then you can make the graph between the two. Just make sure you connect the lines.